Tonight, part three in our series, how a retired Vancouver man is transforming the life of a remote tribe on the other side of the world. For years, the Akka Hill tribe in northern Thailand lived in abject poverty, giving up the lucrative but damaging opium trade for coffee. But after years of practically giving their prime coffee beans away to unscrupulous brokers, John Darch stepped in to help. Now they're getting better than fair trade prices, and they're putting that extra money to some very good use. Tonight, we return to their remote village near Chiang Rai to see how this reversal of fortune is changing their lives for the better in almost every way. For the Akka Hill tribe of northern Thailand, traditions like cooking over open fires in smoke-filled bamboo huts come from a time not so long ago, before electricity and running water reached their remote mountaintop village. When all they had were the crops they grew and the silver rupees brought by opium traders. But while the coins used to adorn the Akka women's ornate headdresses remain, the opium does not. It's been replaced by a new crop. Since coffee, my life has changed in every way because there is more salary and more hope for the future. The opium was illegal and that was no good. After a while, we grew coffee together and it replaced the opium. And that makes me very happy. Hiko, a well respected elder, represents the changing face of his village. His image has become the logo for Doi Chang Coffee. With the help of retired Vancouver mining executive John Darch, they are, for the first time in their lives, earning a decent wage. I offered an arrangement whereby I would buy the green beans from the Akka farmers at a price that was well in excess of fair trade prices. He also made them 50% owners of the new Canadian-based Doi Chang Coffee Company. In just three years, life here has already changed for the better. What was this village like a few years ago? Oh, it's worse. This also, you know, the road is dirt road, all the house made of bamboo, the roof with the grass and all that kind of thing, no income. Weecha right Pramyong, a hard-working humanitarian with a heart of gold, came here at the Akka's request 10 years ago, when coffee brokers were taking terrible advantage of them. Today, he's helping them to build their business and manage their newfound good fortune. This is the site of their latest and most ambitious project. This is, will be the playground for everybody. Then, the school for about 300 children will be this site. The hospital, we are thinking that we are going to put that way if it should. A hospital is something the 10,000 villagers who call Doi Chang home have long needed. Four years ago, when the Thai government built them this clinic, they forgot a few things. Had nothing at all. It's just empty. He's not exaggerating. With the exception of a few beaten up beds, they really don't have anything. This is a treatment room, should be. And again, Empty. all you have are sinks. Do you even have water? And you don't even have water. <laughs> they were supposed to get a dentist, one to serve the entire village. Instead, so they gave you the plumbing, <laughs> and no chair and no dentist. And if you don't do it yourself, be like this another so 20 years. You pull your own tooth here. And that's what we do. <laughs> Keep in mind, Doi Chang is several hours away from the nearest hospital, a place most villagers couldn't access anyway because they don't have Thai ID, a document they must have to leave the mountain. But it's nothing in here. Circumstances that make the inadequacies of the so-called delivery room particularly troubling. It's supposed to be for that. But nothing here. Yeah. So women can't even give birth here? At home, or if you want to go, have to go to the hospital in town. And if you have it at home and there's a problem, you're out of Die. Life. You Both. Die. That happens? People die? Uh, a lot. As for the school, for years, this is how they got there. And once they arrived, this is where they studied. One of four drafty rooms with dirt floors. As you see, it's very hard to get teacher to come up and stay here uh, to teach the students, you know, because you see already, the road to come up here sometimes takes something like five, six hours. 
A few years ago, the government built a new school, but only children with Thai ID can attend, which means hundreds go without. That's why the ACA want to build their own school. As well as a bigger, better daycare. 300 preschoolers live in Doi Chang, but there's only room for 40 here. I don't mind if the grow up children go and help their families in, in the farm, but just two, three, four years old, we should have somebody look after them while their parents go to the coffee farm. Already, money from the sale of their coffee beans has built the ACA their first library. The books to fill it will come with the next harvest. And then there's the Doi Chang Coffee Academy. Built by the farmers themselves, instructors from Thai universities come here to teach them, free of charge, about everything from finances to sustainable agriculture. Everybody knows about earthworm, but they didn't know how to use it. But this one uh, is a way to increase the compost for the farmer. With their newfound knowledge, these little worms will soon grow big and strong, making the soil rich and fertile, adding to the growth and quality of the beans that are making it possible for the Aka to work their way out of poverty. We never beg. We want to work for whatever we want to see. That's how we promise to each other. Tomorrow night, we'll see how the Aka's success with coffee has led to other new business ventures, including tea, honey, soap, and one other product you've got to see to believe. And a reminder, you can watch Linda's earlier reports on the transformation of the Akka Hill tribe, along with exclusive online video on our website at globaltvbc.com. Just look for the link on the homepage.